Hello, 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 and welcome to what's going to be probably one of the last tutorials of this year. Finally, <laughs> the year is over. Oh man, I, I hope next year is going to be better. Either way, um, I will, before we begin with this one, <clears throat> with this tutorial, I will give you a quick uh, like background, I guess, to what we're doing and why we're doing it. Um, so last tutorial or tutorial before that, it's going to be in the video description, you, you can click on it, uh, was all about solid body collisions, right? So rigid bodies colliding and us trying to make some sort of a form. And actually, um, if I can do it like this, like that. So we ended up with uh, this kind of a hanging chain model, right? And I showed you how to do it both in Rhino, come on, focus up, good enough, you got the idea. Um, how to do it both in Rhino and in Blender. Um, once I uploaded it, uh, the, 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 the creator of, of Kangaroo uh, commented on the video and said that actually um, the Grasshopper, the Kangaroo version can be much faster in this particular instance, as long as we're just using curves uh, to, to describe the geometry. Um, if we were not... So the way it can be faster is if we, instead of using rigid body collisions, if we use a collider goal, uh, which basically thickens up the lines and points. And this is what we're going to be trying to do. And uh, we'll just see if uh, it actually works and if it's faster. Because before, um, the, the, the frame rate of our simulation was around one, <laughs> like one frame per second, something like that. So hopefully this will make it faster. Let's, let's dig in. Um, to save some time, um, I already kind of prepared a little bit beforehand. So there are these curves here that are right now um, referenced in. Let me just show you. So all of uh, these are just curves, right? One, two, three, four. So these are four curves. And these four curves are referenced in here and into this curve node. And it's, uh, they are grouped into one big happy family. And then they are moved by series of numbers to the, uh, along the x axis, right? Like that. More or less doesn't matter. And you already can probably tell why I am using this particular group of, of curves and why did I assemble it this way. This is so that uh, they can link to, to copies of themselves in both x and y direction, right? So first I move, uh, I move the group along the x, then I graft it, and then I move it move all of the groups along the y direction to create a grid. And I can control the step size and the count of the grid. Um, yeah, that's, uh, that's a very, very basic script. I will not be getting into that. This, is, this was just a quick um, preparation from my part to make this tutorial a little bit faster. But now for the interesting bit. Uh, we will be using Kangaroo, of course, so I will be creating a uh, uh, solver. Solver, double click solver. Um, and let me just rearrange things so that they're nicer. There we go. And our solver will have, as per usual, a button to reset the solver and a toggle to start or stop the solver, right? And I will have the toggle set to be false so that it's not running, right, as I'm working on it. Okay, and goal objects, I will actually use a data tree where one data branch is just going to be geometry that needs to be shown, and the other data branch is going to be all of the behavior of that geometry. So I will be creating a data tree, which means I will be using Antwine, Antwine tool right here. And actually I don't need three inputs, I just need two. So I'll zoom in to the Antwine node and click on the uh, remove parameter, the, the, the minus sign next to zero two, so that I only have two inputs. 
it doesn't matter if you have three or two, but uh, just to keep things cleaner. And I'll connect Antoine to my goals, goal objects input, which means that two inputs will come in, and that means that two outputs, or rather two data tree branches will come out. So I will use bang, which is, wait, wait a minute. No, I will use explode tree. Explode tree tool, which is called bang here. Um, and I'll just connect the output of the solver to the bang output here. All right, so this part is set up. Now for our goals, right? For our goals for the simulation. Let me make a little bit of room here between these chain links and these uh, goals. Uh, well, the first goal is going to be exactly what I said, show. That's our first goal and I just connect it to zero, zero, like that. Uh, the question is, what do we, what do we show? Well, right now I, Hmm. Do we work with curves? I, I don't think Kangaroo likes curves because these are curves, right? I don't think Kangaroo likes curves that much. Let's work with uh, polylines. So polyline, I'll use polyline tool and we will be showing or, or rather working with polylines which asks us for vertices and we don't really have vertices on these curves. So what I'm going to do is I'll, I'll be a little bit, a little bit naughty in this case. I will be just dividing, uh, divide, uh, divide curve. I'll just divide the curves into equal amount of points and then recreate a polyline through those points. So the way this is going to work is, oh, Oops, <laughs> sorry, that's my bad. Uh, since we grouped them here and we moved, 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 um, the output of this move is going to be a bunch of groups, right? So actually we want to ungroup them, right? It's to have all of these curves separate. So now all of these are going to be indeed, uh, let's just check, separate group, uh, sorry, sorry, separate curves. And I want all of them in the same list, so I'll just right click on the output of the ungroup and choose to flatten and connect it to the divide curve component here. All right, so what we're dealing with right now is not a lot of points. So this is 10 points, I, I believe. Yeah, it should be, or is it 11? No, it's 10. Okay, so it's 10 points. Um, I will say 20, at least. Please, at least 20 points. Something like that. And let's connect the points to the polyline input here. So, so what we did was we drew the curves, we moved them uh, to, to, into a grid of uh, like we, we tiled them into a grid, then we ungrouped them, uh, we divided them up into points, and then we created a poll line through each of these points, right? And then, uh, yeah, let me just hide the solver. So the poll line is being a dick and not closing our curves, as you can see here. We want them to be closed, I think at least. Yeah, I think we want them to, of course, we want them to be close. So I will just create a toggle for the poll line, make it true and connect it to the closed input. Uh, yeah, straight up connect it to the closed input. So once this is toggled true, uh, it closes the curves or, or poll lines in this case. All right, so this was a long way of just uh, rebuilding a polyline from, from the curves. Sorry about that. Um, let's move on. Um, so now there are two main things that we will need to use. First one is how do we make, when the simulation is running, let's say, and there is this whole like chain, chain mail type of a fabric situation going on, how do we make these curves not stretchy, right? 
so that they, they don't stretch to infinity and beyond. Well, the way we do that is by using, oh, I don't remember. I need to check kangaroo two goals, rigid point set, yes, by using rigid point set. So all of these points will try, um, sorry, all of these points, the outputs of the white curve, will try to keep their relative position to each other, meaning you know that the form is going to be locked in place. So rigid point set is the first important input. I will just connect my divide points, um, division points to my point set input here. Okay. Next one is plane, and I don't care about the initial orientation, the initial plane, that's fine. And strength is set to 10. I have absolutely no point of reference. Is it strong or is it weak? So I will just keep the strength as 10 for now. So we have our first goal, and I just straight up connect it there. There we go. That's our first goal. Uh, oh yeah, sorry, by there, <laughs> by there I mean the second branch of the input. As I mentioned before, the first branch is the show, uh, only for the show, uh, so that our polylines transfer through here as this output, uh, while the second branch is going to have all of the behavior, all of the goals. Okay, so now, before we used a rigid body system, this, this guy right here, and it was super slow. Um, now, we instead we will be using, or wait, sorry, we used solid collide system, what, what am I saying? And it was super slow. Uh, but now we are going to go to goals collide, and we'll use collider system. Coalitions between thickened line segments and spheres, super. We use that. That's our collider system, okay? Now it asks us for objects, for radii of, of the objects, and should some of them be ignored or not? Mm. So in terms of ignoring, no. I, I believe we don't need to ignore anything. Radii is just straight up going to be what's the thickness of, of our chain links and objects are actually not going to be polylines because this one asks us for line segments right straight line segments so we need to explode our polylines so we, we grab our polylines we explode them so we have the straight line segments like that does this read as lines line-like curve. Yeah, it feels like it's reading it like, uh, reading it as line, so that's good. Um, so we explode it, and now we will give it certain thickness. I don't know, two? <laughs> um, radius of two, maybe. We'll see. We'll see if it's too big or too small. I, I don't know. Doesn't seem like it's going to be too big. Um, okay, so that's our second goal. All of these line segments are inside of kangaroo solver are being thickened and they will not be able to uh, pass through each other. They will collide, thus the collider object uh, name, right? Holding down the shift key, I will connect it to 0, 1 input of the antwine so that this is our second goal, the second goal for our simulation. All right, um, I believe we can, like this is enough for it to run. And it's giving us one or, <sighs> okay. Solution, solution exception, one or more errors occurred. Why? Is it because this is grafted? I think it, it might be because the exploded values are grafted. Now reset. No, it's still not happy. Why is it not happy? Should this be? Hmm. 
Sorry, I'm I'm just thinking now. <laughs> hmm. Okay, time for a pause. I'll be I'll figure it out and I'll continue the video from there. Okay, that literally took me like a ten seconds <laughs> to figure out. Um, apparently, this line-like curve is not the same thing as a line, I believe, um, at least in, in the mind of a solver. So if we take the exploded segments, which are flattened, by the way, or should they not be flattened? Well, we'll, we'll see. <clears throat> if we take the exploded segments and we connect them to a line node and connect that, then this becomes a line rather than a line-like curve and then once I connect it, it just works straight up right it's not red anymore okay so we can continue who that was a uh, I thought that I will <laughs> I, I thought that I'm, I'm screwed at, at, at the one point anyway so this is our goal number two let me start grouping things so that you can see which goal is which. So this one is the, the weird one. And let me just color, hello, color. Uh, let me just make it like that and make it to a blob. Okay. So we have our show goal, we have our origin point set goal and um, actually let me move it like so. And then we have our collider goal. <clears throat> All right. So now, um, these guys will be bouncing around, and let me reset the simulation. These guys will be bouncing around, and I actually kind of want to visualize it, I think. Let's make less of them, first of all, only three. So it's, it's, it's only going to be three by three links. Reset so that it runs faster, and Let's see, so from this output, we get a bunch of polylines, which are, yeah. So what about it? Do I want to convert them back to curves? I do, right? So we have a bunch of polylines and I want to convert them back to curves. So explode, explode uh, these polylines like that. So I have a bunch of segments. And then if I take, do I even need to do that? Maybe I can just do, no, I do need every starting, uh, every starting point. Okay, so I explode them. I have a bunch of set, uh, segments. I grab the endpoints. So I have all of the start points, uh, sorry, not just the endpoints, but the start and the end points of every segment. So it's basically these are the segments that I'm talking about. Uh, I have the start point and I can create a interpolated curve, interpolated curve through the start points like so. And I believe I can just hide all of it. And as per usual, it doesn't want to close, but uh, there is an option to make it periodic right here. So I can toggle, boolean toggle, that option to be true, and then it closes off. So we're back to clean curves. And then I can um, use mesh pipe. What the hell is this? Parameter pipe mesh. Wh whoa, where are you from? You are from Pufferfish. Okay, so I am going to be using parameter pipe mesh tool, but uh, you can just use mesh tools plugin or mesh edit plugin. I don't remember how it's called and just uh, get the mesh pipe from there. I don't know why I don't have it, but actually I could check which one is faster. So mesh pipe works like that. And it's not that not that fast. So how would just a regular pipe work? Oh, my bad. 
Oh, much slower. Okay, okay, okay. So we are going to be using mesh pipe, and I am going to be uh, changing up a few things. So first input is curve. So duh, we just use the curve. Second input is radius. So radius is going to be the same as our radius for collisions, or else the simulation is going to look weird. So that's easy. We just connect it like so. It's our radius. Oh, so two is two is there. Two is a strong radius. And then we have parameters u as list. Uh, ew. Oh. This is a very bad mesh pipe. Okay, let me download the correct one. Um, should I? I should probably stop the video here. Just give me a second. And we are back. So I will be using Mesh Tools plugin, right? So I just Googled Mesh Tools Grasshopper and it directs me to this website from where we can download it and once you have downloaded it you will have it in your downloads folder and the nice thing about it as long as the plugin doesn't have any dll files you don't need to restart grasshopper uh, or restart rhino for it to start running which is super nice and convenient i will right click on it to go to properties click on unblock hit apply you know usual stuff and drag, drag and drop it into my grasshopper window. So now, if I type mesh pipe, there we go, there's the mesh pipe tool, and now it should be much faster. It is not. <laughs> oh, come on. Either way, doesn't matter. Um, doesn't matter if it's not as fast, at least we don't have uh, so many. Uh, inputs. So radius back to radius, that's our collider radius of 2. Great. Then we have accuracy defined by angle, rotation, segments, caps. So what are segments? Ah, uh, okay. So segments is how many faces does the... Let me just turn on the mesh wires. Uh, so segments is how many faces does the uh, cross section of a pipe have and I will just use five uh, just to make it or maybe less. Let's use four. I'll use four to just make it, you know, good enough. Um, and then for accuracy, that's defined by angle in radians. This is how many segments is it going to make along this edge. I think I will use uh, 0 0.4. Yeah, something like that should, should do the trick. I don't think we need more. Dude, that's, that's, a, that's a super ugly... Oh, sorry. Yeah, so that the, the end is super ugly because the end caps are round by default. So I want them to be none. Uh, so I will just use uh, number zero for our end caps input right here. So now there is none, but it's all freaky. Hmm. Why is it freaky? That's super strange. That's a clean NURBS curve. That's our starting points. That's our uh, segments. Hmm. Let's let's think. Let's think. Let's think. Well, for now, let's just have have them like that. I will clean them up in in just a second. Um, because I wanna move on with this tutorial. Uh, let me run Catmull Clark through it. Catmull Clark subdivision to just introduce more um, more detail, uh, like roundedness, ness, 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 ness. 
um, and then let's color it so preview uh, or rather custom preview uh, swat swatch I'll just use some sort of a mm, that's pretty ugly maybe something like that preview my schedules off okay so there there is that problem there but other than that i think this looks okay um <clears throat> let's run the simulation and see what what happens so see how they bounce off from each other let's try again wow well, that's good that's that's what we want to see so that's great okay uh, so this works. Uh, all we need to do now is introduce more interesting things. So I will be introducing gravity and I'll be introducing anchoring points so that the chain doesn't just fly off. So gravity wise, the, the tool that does that is called, or goal that does that is called load load and it asks for points and the trick is that we can use uh, center points of our point group and it is going to be um, the, the gravity is going to be added or the force of gravity is going to be added to all of the points from which we got the center point because of how rigid point set works in terms of how it generates plane. I will not go into that too, too, too much, but just trust me. So what we do is we grab an average from our, all of our points. By the way, mathematically, average number of all of the coordinates, all of the x coordinates, all of the y coordinates, and all of the z coordinates, three average numbers of those when used describe the center point of any point cloud. So that's nice. Um, so that's our center point for each of these guys. And then all I need to do is just say that it's going to be in z direction and it's going to be quite low. So let's try 0 0.1. We don't want to rip it. Uh, apart and holding down the shift key I'll just connect it to the Antwine so that's our load and then we if if I okay let's run it if I run it now it just flies off right so that's boring um, I need I can either use anchor points but that's going to be tricky I, I, I would prefer to use support support this guy right here, I'll just connect it immediately. And support will give me, will ask me for a plane that needs to be restrained. And remember where I said that rigid point set creates planes right on the middle of the point cloud, right in the middle of the point cloud. We will be choosing which points of these to restrain. So how do we do that? Well, there's many many different ways mm, maybe i just let me grab an average again first of all i could reuse the output of that one but i just want to keep things a bit cleaner visually so i grab the average and then i will ask hmm. sorry I'm, I'm just thinking i will okay um I have these points and I will create a sphere in Rhino right here, let's say. And I'll take that sphere and copy it to here, to let's say here, and to yeah, to here. And I'll say the points that are inside of that sphere, of those spheres, should be anchored or the elements to which those points belong to should be anchored. So let me actually check it in, in perspective because I think we missed it in per Oh yeah, yeah, we're missing it in perspective. So uh, let me do that. That's good. Let me do that. Now that point is swallowed. Do that. That's great. 
and that so i'm ignoring that point because that or rather no 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 i'll use the bottom one because it belongs to this curve right here rather than this curve right here okay so we have these four spheres i will reference them in as b-reps right click set multiple b-reps that's easy and that's done um and then i will ask Are these points inside of these B-reps or not? So, in B-reps, no. How is it called? <laughs> God damn it. Surface analysis point in B-reps. Point in B-reps. There's an option for point in B-rep. No, 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 no. We're checking for multiple, with multiple spheres. So it is point in B-reps, boundary representations, like that. Asks us for a B rep, great. Asks us for points, great. We have our outputs, which is uh, true if it's inside, false if it's outside, meaning that we can use cull, cull pattern, and we can cull these points, these all of the center points, with this pattern, with the inside outside check, right? And only, only have left. Let me hide the sphere so that you can see. Uh, only have the points that are inside of the spheres left. This, 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 and this. Great, that works. Um, and then, what does it do with the data tree though? Oh shit, okay. Uh, so the data tree gets uh, kind of screwed over. Uh, let me just clean tree, clean tree real fast. Uh, so I connect the cull output to the tree T input, and I will say that the empty branches should be removed because if uh, if uh, kangaroo solver gets an empty branch, it's going to freak out. I'm pretty sure of it. So let me toggle boolean toggle, connect it to the E input here, and choose to have it as true. Okay. So now this is clean enough. Uh, it still needs to be a, a plane rather than a point, and we know that we are using XY planes to lock everything in place, so we'll continue on using XY planes. Like that. Okay, I believe that's it. I don't think we need to do anything more with this, and this is our final and uh, hardest goal. Mm -hmm. Maybe let's watch it like that and then disable this. Okay. <sighs> Moment of truth. So let's run it. Oh, it broke away. <laughs> but goddamn, that's fast, right? Like, uh, just check out the video in, uh, in the description where we did it with... Um, uh, where, where is it? Where we did it with rigid bodies, that was super slow. This one is hella fast. Nice, okay, uh, so it's it's way too, the, the, the load is way too strong, so let me do 0 0.01, 10 times lower. Um, that should fix it. So now it's kind of lifting up slow, more slowly, so it has more time to make the calculations. This is almost real time. This is as good as a Blender simulation. Wonderful. Like as long as you can do a simulation just with curves, thickened curves, the kangaroo is, is really good. Like the drawback of it is that you are indeed locked to just having curves, right? You can't do anything more with it, uh, which, like uh, doing simulation only with curves and points, uh, you can't just like create a weird mesh and do a simulation with it, uh, which is restrictive. 
in that case, you would need to use the tutorial that I've shown you before. You know, again, video description, blah, blah, blah. But this is great. Okay, so a few things to do. First one is, uh, of course, resetting, <clears throat> increasing the count to like seven. Of course, <laughs> we need to check. Um, this starts being quite slow, so I will do a data dam. I'll do a data dam here, like that. So as the simulation is going to be running, we'll only see the curves. But once it's done, we will just click on this data dam and then it's go uh, the curves are going to be meshed. Uh, we should be saving like quarter of a second with um, per each step with, with, with this approach. So we are going to be looking at curves and I want to lock different points. So let me show. Great. Okay, so we have four points here. I actually want, I do want to log the corners, that's for sure. That, uh, is that good enough? Yeah, that's good enough. Just, so corner, corner, ah, uh, yes, hello, corner. These are locked and that one is also locked and now let's lock a few more. So I think I will lock this one right there. Uh, I, I just am using alt key to copy the, the, the sphere and I will lock so if that one is locked, maybe I can lock something in the middle right here, like in the middle row. Yeah, let's, let's just YOLO, uh, let's just see. So we have now six points locked and let me reference them in, set multiple B-reps. And let's, let's just see how this uh, whole thing goes. Oh, this is, uh, I'm getting really excited about this one. Uh, reset, run. Damn, this is fast. This is like, uh, I mean, it's it's definitely not, when, when you increase the resolution this much, it's definitely not uh, real time. But damn, this is fast. Also, what the hell is going on here? Are these guys bending? Is it because of the... the strength being low for rigid points? Wait, let me try... as the simulation is running. You should never do this, by the way. Yep, yep, yep. <laughs> so you need to uh, have a harder, uh, harder cap on how much the points can um, mess around. But it looks like oop, 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 oop. looks like this is doing as as it's uh, doing its thing. Oh wait, it disconnected there. Oopsie. We need to restart, I'm sorry, because it disconnected right here. Um, the question is, did it disconnect though, or did I just mess up the positioning of the sphere? Yeah, I messed up the positioning of the sphere. So that's my bad. Okay, I want this sphere to lock this point. Okay, now it should be, uh, now it should work. Okay, we do that, we reset, we run. Okay, as, as this is running, I'll just talk. Um, so this whole, whole simulation thing, I think it's 
It's wonderful. Like it's 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 great, and it does introduce a lot of possibilities on what you can do. So if you don't know about Antoni Gaudi, you should read up the the guy who designed Sagrada da Familia used hanging chain models to design the domes of the church. Um, and here we can do the same thing only with the computer. So it's a much faster iterative process, which I think is great. Um, the, the thing is, when you increase speed this way, you reduce flexibility of what the tool can actually do. Um, but just having that option of, I just needed to do freaking lines and points rather than complex meshes. I think that's, uh, it's, it's great to just have that. Um, I will be uh, uploading the the file to for my Patreons to download and check it out. Uh, so if you either couldn't couldn't follow along or if you're lazy and you don't want to follow along, uh, consider supporting the channel and you get the this definition also. By the way, all of the definitions from all of the previous tutorials for free, and you you will be able to stay a lazy ass. <laughs> but for now, um, I will let this run for a bit now. I'll stop the, the video and I will continue the video once this is kind of converged to a nice little dome. Um, and I'll tell you how long it took. So just give me or give uh, the simulation a few minutes and we'll continue. Uh, there we go, five minutes have passed and this is a success, a great dome. Okay, so it's not necessarily 100% real time, but with this amount of elements, I wouldn't assume that any program could do this real time. So this is a great, especially with, with my laptop. So this is a, a really, really great improvement. And I am still going to goddamn say that this is real time in the thumbnail and in the video description to get all that sweet, sweet clickbait money, clickbait YouTube revenue. Anyway. <laughs> It's, this is great. Um, where were we? All oh, right, right. We were looking at uh, the mesh pipe. So let, let's actually look how, look at it. Um, it looks good from afar, but when I come close, I can see that it breaks open. And why does it break open? I have no idea. Uh, because this is, well, the only reason why it would be breaking open is if the curves are not closed. So I can check, um, test if a curve is closed or periodic. Um, so let me just grab a panel. They are closed and they are periodic curves. So, which tells me that it's probably the mesh pipe tool that's at fault. That's not a problem. Instead of mesh pipe, I will be using the piping tool from Pufferfish. So let me just delete that. Pipe. Um, how is it called? Parameter pipe mesh. That's from Pufferfish plugin. Wanted to not use it, but I will end up using it either way. Okay, so we connect the curves to curves. Of course, the radius is again two. I just want it to work uh, and be all clean. That's our radius. Oh yeah, that's why we didn't use it for, because of the U and V parameters. So let me show you what those are. Um, actually, you don't really see the U parameters. Oh yeah, that's, that, that's fine. So the V parameter, is the cross section. And you can see here that there's five numbers. 
Uh, actually, it's four because zero equals one in this particular case. And it's basically how many divisions will the cross section have. And in this case, it's um, you can see that it's a four sided uh, cross section. And the reason why there's five numbers instead of four is because um, vertex zero and vertex one are in the same position. It closes itself off, right? Uh, so that's good. We don't need to mess around with that. But the U um, amount of U divisions, is, I, I would say it's not enough. So I need more. So how do you get these parameters? Well, we, you, it's quite easy. You just do range. So you do a range of numbers, you connect the range to the U input, and then for the how many divisions you want, you plug in a slider or a number to here, to the end input. So I will do 20, twice as many as there were before. Okay, that's super slow. Yeah, that takes like two seconds to calculate, but it does calculate, so this is nice. Uh, what else do we have here? Weighted, we don't care. Length, we don't care. Angle, don't care. Rotation, don't care. End type, none. That's great. Triangulate, we don't care. No. Uh, okay, so that's that's all we needed to do. We have our mesh pipes, and it seems like it's they are clean. Um, while we're at it, since we're already using uh, Pufferfish, I will show you one more tool, which is called Rebuild Mesh. Rebuild Mesh tool. It's in Pufferfish plugin. Um, and it asks us for a mesh, so we just give it all of the meshes that we have. And it has a bunch of uh, options for what do you want to do with it. And what I want to do with it is actually uh, weld the vertices together. Right. So weld the vertices means that it will get rid of all of the vertices that are um, overlapping each other. Right? There's not going to be any duplicate points on the mesh. So I'll just um, say, it asks for a number, right? Yeah, so I'll just say every vertex that is closer to its neighbor than 0 0.1 units should be merged to the neighbor. This should solve a lot of shading issues down the line. Uh, and then I'll just grab a toggle, Boolean toggle. Uh, connect it to uh, rebuild normals input and connect it to unify normals input. Yes, unify normals input right here and turn it on. Yeah, that's it. That's all we need to do. Uh, I just connect it to Catmull Clark. It smooths it out. We end up with some nice looking chains and clean topology for the chains. All quad meshes, all clean. That's it. That's it. We are done. We are done. And this is, this looks glorious. Um, I really enjoy the speed at which, oh, I can do turntable. Yeah, come on. Can we do Arctic view? Skip to cancel. Can we do Arctic view? I just wanna. Uh, uh, ew, ew, ew. Uh, color black. Ah, yes. Better. Turn the table. Alright. Um, that's it. That's it for this tutorial. Hope you learned something new. If you haven't, then sucks to be you. Um, sorry for wasting your time, I guess. <laughs> uh, those, again, those of you who are lazy, uh, support me on Patreon and you can just straight up um, download the definition together with the chain files. Uh, link in the video description. I will be uploading a few more tutorials before the end of the year, but not too many. I just want the year to end as fast as possible. Let me amp up the, the speed. Not that much. That's it. Bye. Bye. I need to learn how to say goodbye. Say goodbye. <laughs>